Good morning, folks. Today's topics widespread from tension building beneath our feet to rethinking the largest scales of the cosmos. Bright spot on the south here is that lone, inactive sunspot, so let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the Earth-facing half of the sun was dominated by coronal holes. One of the departing openings had its solar wind impact yesterday, and so I am quite glad to have pointed out the cosmic ray error spikes in the previous days, such that the actual, real solar wind impact should be easily discerned on the right side of the image. The key characteristic is the purple plasma speed couldn't even crack 500 kilometers per second, meaning it is a weaker stream that only produced the shortest-lived geomagnetic instability, that's the yellow bar on the right, and also the magnetometer on the left with the deviation spike from the normal curves, indicating the impacting stream as well. We're back at Tony Heller's Real Climate Science blog, Nobody on Earth does a better job showing how NASA changes past temperature data to manipulate current perspective. In the 1998 version, you can see the curve tells a different story than that same time period in the current maps. By the way, while the news is righteously reporting the Alaskan heat wave, they are neglecting the other side again. Latvia expected to flirt with their record cold marks this week, and same for the surrounding nations. Up next... Danger beneath the surface as an important fault in Turkey has been studied in detail for the first time under the water. To their horror, they found a tremendous amount of stress beneath Istanbul, enough to produce a mid-range magnitude 7 earthquake. When it releases, the city could be raised to the ground and they say it is only a matter of time. Let's go to space in the early stages of the youngest massive protostar known. They say the core, disk, and surrounding gases are visible in a new ALMA image, Color added here to see those three components in the processing. They say it's only 3,000 years old. A for effort today goes to these scientists who have come up with a likely not absolute truth idea, but which represents the flavor of dark matter particle debunking hypotheses that we need to start seeing more and more. In this work, it is merely the geometry of the cosmos creating greater potential interactions and no magic particles needed. Something that is much closer to absolute truth is the examination of the dust-obscured star formation in the heavens. The conclusion is simple, but with major implications. In not being able to fully resolve the obscuring dust, they lack a critical understanding about particle density in those regions and the magnetic fields and plasma turbulence at work behind that veil. Last but not least, oh boy has the community been waiting for a hypothesis like this one. Einstein's gravity is not the only way to describe the action over distance and interactions of the large-scale cosmic structure. This hits on a key problem with purely gravitational models, including this one here, and that is the fact that the models are just good descriptors of visible action, and there are probably lots of good ways to describe it. But they all miss the mark of describing the genesis and essence of the truths behind them. In reality, at the cosmological scale, tweaking variables is often enough to get you something publishable, but to find the unicorn, they'll have to select a different forest entirely. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.